Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Robin Wansley, and I have the honor of being a Minneapolis first black independent democratic uh, socialist city council member. Um, it is such an honor to be able to speak alongside every single, I can't even get to the back, all y'all, um, and everyone here, um, because I know the pressures that we face waking up every single day as badass women to push for real and lasting change across the state, and you do it so gracefully. Like, all y'all look good, too. So you make it look good. It's hard, but you make it look good. Um, and that's the common denominator that I see amongst all of us badass women, especially those in this room right now. We all share this deep, um, abiding passion for creating transformative change. Um, and I'm not talking about the cute, superficial, you know, ribbon cutting type change either. That's cool, but I don't think that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm talking about the type of change that can uh, lead to many sleepless nights. Uh, many long meetings, phone calls, spiritual questioning, um, and, and many bouts of intense fear and anxiety. I'm talking about the type of change that strives to dismantle unjust and violent systems, the type of change that strikes fear in the hearts of the powerful, and most importantly, the type of fear that allows all of us to make what was or what is deemed impossible possible. And actually, that's the part, the making the impossible possible part. That's the thing that unites most badass women, especially those who look to make the big, uh, big and scary and transformative changes in this world. And I can say that, you know, I'm a walking testimony of this, probably like so many of you, as we've heard throughout the, the past hour. One of the very first campaigns that I worked on in Minneapolis was the 15 minimum wage campaign. And for years, we heard that we could never get 15. Like, really? $30,000 so? Like, really? Um, we were told by elected leaders and business owners that taking on poverty wages would actually expedite the collapse of civilization. <laughs> like, legit. Legit, though. Because all the businesses would then flee away from that same civilization, I guess. <laughs> and instead of listening to the naysayers, we grew our multiracial working class coalition. We kept organizing, we kept disrupting, we kept hosting long ass meetings and losing many hours of sleep, and we eventually won and made Minneapolis the first Midwestern city to pass 15 in 2017. <laughs> And since 15, I've continued to see ordinary people of all backgrounds do the impossible, no matter how hard the circumstances were. I saw it with the water protectors just last uh, summer who took on the Ingridge uh, Line 3 pipeline. I saw it with BLM and their fights and continued fights for justice for Jamar Clark, Philando Castile, George Floyd, Dante Wright, Winston Smith, and Amir Locke is so sad that we even have to keep naming these folks. I saw it during the historic uprising following George Floyd's murder that sparked a global uprising across this world. I saw it with our educators who led a historic three-week strike just a few weeks ago. And I'm seeing it now with our local housing justice movement um, who are fighting for the impossible rent control uh, policy here in Minneapolis. And shout out to those who are in St. Paul. You got it before us. Thank y'all. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> and I see it every day uh, with my constituents who are boldly organizing for a Minneapolis Green New Deal. And it's because of ordinary people their movements, their intolerance of the status quo, and the commitment to making the impossible possible that I get to serve this city as its first black democratic, independent democratic socialist, something that just five months ago was also deemed impossible. So this brings me to the end of my comments. And since I'm an organizer, I got some to-dos for y'all. <laughs> which I know will not upset many of y'all because I know badass women love clear directives just as much as we love hype-ass speeches. 
so my charge to you this afternoon is to simply chase the impossible. Seek out those who are also doing the same. This is a relatively easy uh, to do that I'm giving you because the Women's Press and the Changemaker Alliance literally just gather a bunch of us who's doing this very work in the same room together. But seriously, I charge you to introduce yourself to the women that spoke here, the women that are in the crowd, those of you who's watching this live stream. Seek out the organizations that were named today. Um, and I want you to reach out to these women and ask them two questions. What, what are your passions? And what is it that you're looking to change? And if their answers causes you to pause and even think, yo, I don't think that's possible. I want you to immediately set up a meeting with them. <laughs> I want you to donate. I want you to get all their information and show up for them. I want you to do this because making the impossible possible can never happen via one person, as Lucina mentioned. No matter how badass we may be, change ain't never came from one person. That real insomnia-inducing, transformative, scary-type change that's necessary to change our communities, our cities, and our world for the better is going to require a brigade of badass people coming together to make it happen. And we are so fortunate, so fortunate, that the very people who are leading this hard but necessary work are in the same room together, that are in this same city together, the site of one of the most historic uprisings. We get to be here and lean into the brilliance and the talent that is in this space. So badass women, I now leave you with your to-dos. <laughs> you know, you got some homework. And I am so grateful for the Women's Press, the Changemaker Alliance, every single one of y'all for just allowing me to share space with you this afternoon. So let's continue to do badass things together. Yeah.